thank you everyone for being with us. I'm super excited, um, and I hope that will come across, uh, to be here today as we launch the common domain model into Finos. I'm Fionn Ackland, as Gab said. I co-lead our data models and governance team at Goldman Sachs. But a large part of my role has actually been working with the industry over the last six years. So I was there at the inception of the common domain model as we met in the ISDA offices six years ago um, and really talked in depth about what does the right construct look like? How do we really want to build an industry standard for the industry to use? And we really got down into the details of this idea of building building blocks that allows us to really define the entire industry um, and the financial products that are used within the industry. We don't want to spend too much time uh, talking about what is the CDM, but as a quick summary, it really is an industry standard that defines all the financial products that the financial industry trade, but it goes one step further and also defines how we actually process life cycle events for those trades and positions. Actually, earlier in the year, I was at the ISDA AGM, and the chairman of the CFTC said, we really need clear data definitions and machine-readable code. And I think that's absolutely what the CDM does. Um, and those of you who have been involved in the uh, recent regulatory go live earlier this week, as which I have been, um, hopefully you'll start to see how we can use the common domain model to really help drive that. The other big benefit we wanted as we looked and started the CDM was how do we actually capitalize on the new technologies out there, so blockchain and DLT. And hopefully you'll start to see as we talk through over the next 20 minutes how that can be, how that can be used as well. Before we get started, hopefully you can see on the screen behind us, we have three trade associations coming together, so ISDA, ISLA, and ICMA. Um, so perhaps I'll get you all to introduce yourselves, um, and then we'll get started. Thank you, everyone. Hi, I'm Georgina Jarrett from uh, ICMA. Uh, that's the International Capital Markets Association. Uh, we work very closely with CIFMA here in the US uh, and look after the debt capital markets industry globally. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Alan Milligan, and I'm representing uh, ISDA uh, this morning. Um, classically, uh, the derivatives um, side of business. Um, my role at ISDA is Head of Data and Digital. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Adrian Dale. I'm the Head of Regulation, Digital and Market Practices at ISLA, which is the Security Lending Association. Excellent. So let's get started. Perhaps you could take us through what's excited you most about the journey so far with the CDM, and perhaps we'll go in chronological order. So let's start with you, Alan, at ISDA. Thank you very much, uh, Fionn. Well, you know, ISDA has been uh, part of the CDM journey for five years. It, it's obviously not new uh, to ISDA, and what's particularly uh, exciting um, where we find ourselves now with the CDM, you know, is extending the cross block coverage of uh, CDM beyond uh, just derivatives, so securi securities um, and, and a SEC lending uh, with ISLA, uh, Enigma, and more recently, um, Finos. And I think, you know, over the last month, we've seen some very exciting developments. We've seen a real world industry implementation of uh, digital regulatory reporting. I think it was a press release some weeks ago from a member firm, and that's an end-to-end -end test. Now in production um, for CF CFTC uh, regulatory reporting. And of course, the press announcement last week um, from Goldman Sachs. Perhaps you can touch upon that later, Beyond. Yeah, great. Adrian? Uh, I forgot what the question was there for a second. <laughs> Luckily, I've got notes. Uh, so our journey was a little bit different. Um, we started off in 2019 with a series of papers uh, called the Agenda for Change, and we were looking at how the market was evolving uh, and also the evolution of the technology at the same time, how we can combine those, those two aspects to, to improve the way the market operates. The conclusion was that we needed to have, of course, standards, which is probably the, the, the most used word you're going to hear today across everything. Uh, looking to what our fellow associations were doing as well, it was quite obvious that that's where we needed to, the direction we needed to go in. So all of those papers actually are online and we produced another one just very recently actually, it's on, our, uh, on the ISLA EMEA website and you can see uh, the work that we've been doing on that and how we've, how we've evolved to where we are at the moment. Uh, the exciting thing, that's the, that yep. was the question, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the exciting thing is, so I've been in the industry for a long time uh, and there's, also, there's just problem statements coming out all over the place. To address those things, the way that we've been doing things historically is looking at you know, the, an individual problem statement, solving for it, and then just creating more complexity. So the exciting thing now is where we have standards that we can start actually working to solve all of those things, and that's the future that's... Uh, sorry to mention Excellent. the word future. That's one no, that's good. Future. 
Excellent. Georgina, how about you? And last but not least, um, so ICMA has just very recently, well, not so recently, but over the last couple of years, sort of been working hard to add the bond and repo transaction life cycles to the model. Um, that business, for those of you who know about it, is, is very, very fragmented and actually hasn't done a lot of whole scale transformation end to end on that trade life cycle. So there's gallons of opportunity. I think excitement and the words modeling and data models are sometimes quite difficult to marry up, but we are genuinely really excited to be part of this uh, initiative. And indeed actually working together as three trade associations to simplify and standardize transactions that really are important. And you know, as we all know, create massive cost and complexity that just isn't necessary. So. Yep, we're very, very happy to be part of the Perhaps I'm one of those geeks that gets super excited about models. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I, I wasn't shouldn't actually say that. Your, your decision to be excited about <laughs> models, but... Excellent. Um, so, can I just add a yeah, tagline into that? It's an important thing of what we're all doing. Is it's, a, it's the market building something for the market, which is something that hasn't happened before. Mm. There's normally a, you know, a, vin, a vendor or a firm doing something. And at the same time that we're doing that, it's, it's called for by the regulators and their tagline from the European side anyway, is what can we do to help? So that shows that the regulators are really involved, uh, invested in what we're doing as well. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I think there's definitely the problem statement out there that we need to solve. And I think this absolutely is, is the solution. Perhaps let's look a little bit into the future then. What do you hope for the, the CDM over the next couple of years? And perhaps also touch on the impact that should have for the financial industry. Georgina, let's start. <laughs> okay, so I mean, I think it's uh, hugely why we're here, actually. So the associations have built with a lot of input from all of our vast membership between the three associations. So the banks, the asset managers, the investors, in our case, the issuers, etc. all the technology firms, some of the law firms and all the other participants in the market. We've built a model that we believe is a pretty good start to show how these transactions work. If we could all rewind the entire evolution of the industry and start again, then maybe we'd have all done it together the same way and then our regulatory pain would have been a lot less. I think the exciting part now is kind of getting it out into the community, which is what this is all about, and getting people to actually start to use these models and properly embed them. And as a result, more brains makes it better, richer, more effective, more efficient. This is real testing to all of us techies, you know, we're actually going to test it in the real world. So that's the, that's the next step from our perspective. And it's, it's great news, I think. Yeah, great. And Alan, perhaps you've had the longest. So what's, what's the next <laughs> yeah. six years? You know what you're doing. I, th I, think, the, I think, you know, the, the key uh, statement is that, you know, wh why are we doing CDM and some of its use cases like DRR? And I think one of the, you know, the key propositions is we're doing it to maximize cost efficiencies through industry mutualization. You know, this is not theoretical. We demonstrated that in the last year with uh, digital regulatory reporting, DRR. You know, so we've, we've seen and witnessed those, you know, cost efficiencies. Um, you know, and this is a great opportunity uh, with the other trade associations to extend the breadth and depth of CDM beyond just derivatives, you know, to, to new uh, asset classes. Great, and Adrian. So we're going to talk a bit about those problem statements I mentioned earlier on. So we've got uh, regulations, we've got sustainability, we've got the, the high cost of, uh, of operations, which is the point in the panel earlier, I think it was Colin who made a, a point about why should they be contributing. There's a, there's a business case in there because the cost of all of this infrastructure at the moment is enormous. Uh, there's a lot of focus on it from firms and also what's the solution? It's actually to, to come up with these, to, to use these standards. And there are too many standards, so there are lots of people creating their own standards at the moment and actually it needs to happen in a, in a common, common place which is the trade associations and of course on Finos as well. There's two examples I want to give for you know, of the future that we can look at. So a common practice in financial firms is where you have to do a transaction and you have to do lots of other transactions to support it. To get to that point in the future where we can do all of these transactions, they can all be expressed in a single sort of standard. And then that means you get this interoperability between all the, pla all the platforms internally and externally. And internally, I mean that in, internally within a firm, they've got a big mess at the moment trying to connect all the different platforms together and that needs to be solved. And externally, I mean about regulators, for instance, or talking to your counterparts or uh, interacting with exchanges. The other thing is that to get away from this, uh, this paradigm we're in at the moment, where there's a regulation, we take SFTR, which is, I know it's a European one, but you've got your, uh, the 10C1, which is a similar sort of thing. 
where the regulator says, I want a list of all these fields, and that actually isn't the right way to do it. It should be the market saying what we want, what, what our transactions look like, and then the regulator says, saying, fine, shopping list, I'll take out of those things. So the future is that we don't spend five years trying to figure out what the regulator wants. We just say this is how it operates, and they're satisfied. Yeah, and I think the other one, and Alan mentioned it a little bit before, and I sort of talked about blockchain and, and DLT, the other space is how do we start to really use the technology that's out there in the industry. Um, and just uh, two weeks ago, I think it was, GS announced the launch of our GS DAP, so the digital assets platform. And we did our first bond insurance on there, on chain, and the interest rate hedge for that actually uses the CDM as the model. Um, and so that's sort of the first implementation for us of the CDM out there on blockchain and DLT. So definitely starting to see this adoption happen um, when you've worked on something for six years it's really exciting when it starts to actually sort of come to fruition so that's that's really exciting we've covered a little bit now about the cdm but we are at an open source conference so perhaps we should turn and talk a little bit about that so to perhaps take us through why the trade associations have have decided to actually open source the common domain model at this stage in its journey and adrian let's start with you so trade associations have a sort of more altruistic view, I suppose, in the way that the markets operate. Um, if we take example of what we do as trade associations, we create, apart from uh, looking after the legal agreements, we also create best practices or standard operating um, procedures, I think is the other term that's used. And that to be a market standard, it needs to be out there for everyone to look at. There's no point in it being ring fenced. So it made complete sense to go through some process to, to, you know, to distribute that more widely, to create that standard, and it's exactly what uh, members were asking for. We've had it time and again over the past decade, people saying, where's that conversation going to happen? It has to happen in an open place so that we can all adopt it. But they need to have the feedback into it as well. So you need to have something where people can be engaged with it and, and it's open for everyone to use and it creates a standard, not just for our members. Is that yeah, great. Okay. Georgina. Yeah, so, I mean, it, these things are never developed for commercial gain. I mean, nothing that the trade associations ever do is, is on that basis. They are not-for-profit organisations, albeit not, arguably not a charity, but let's call it a charity for the financial services industry. And I think, actually, we've touched on regulation. It's quite important that we're now being seen as even more important between the industry, so representing the whole industry, in this case, three industries or three parts of our financial services industry you know, on their behalf, right? So taking this to open source, as I mentioned before, is really getting it to live, getting it to fly. You know, there are three of us, even though we're all independent of the, you know, actual market participants themselves, but there are now three of us, so we need to put it somewhere where it's independent of all three of us as well, right? So, yeah, I think that's the reason. We want it, you know, for open and free use, and that's open source, really, isn't it? Yeah, great. Yeah. Alan? Yeah, I, I think, you know, open source uh, offers uh, a, a kind of neutral third party source of contributors beyond just the typical mm. participants you might see. I think that brings great value and it also increases, you know, transparency to the regulatory community globally. And I think, you know, that's very important having that uh, transparency and, you know, the neutrality of those contributors. There's no, you know, commercial proposition. You know, we're trying to do it, you know, for, for good cause and good reasons. So I think, you know, that's a, a core benefit. Yeah, I think it's, it is that the adoption of a standard is the only way that actually we gain the benefit from it. Um, so for me and some of the reasons why I love working in the open source community is it allows us to get more participants um, and also to therefore accelerate the build of these things as we get more people to actually um, contribute to it. And, and hopefully it makes all of you guys feel a bit more responsibility for what's going in there. Um, and so as it starts to get adopted, you've got a little bit more of a confidence in, in what's on there. So super exciting. I'm sure there's lots of people out here, and I know I've heard a couple of people um, talking about it earlier on. Perhaps we should just touch on how did you land on actually using FinOS to open source it? So Alan, I don't know if you want to take that one. Uh, so thank you. Three trade associations were involved in the uh, selection process. We went through a kind of rigorous formal RFP uh, process uh, with six candidates. Um, after an extensive process of uh, scoring, uh, we decided, I think unanimously, in fact, it was unanimously on uh, uh, Finos. Um, I think some of the contributing factors were cost efficiency, um, you know, reputation and legacy, especially with the history. Um, of Finox and, 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 and Finos and the Linux Foundation, you know, again, and transparency. It's a very, very transparent governance process, which I think 
um, helps um, with the communication with the regulators. Adrian, anything to add? I, I mean, I just love the, the, that, the sound of it, the, the, the Finos, the non-profit organisation. We're non-profit organisations. Yes, we had to go through the RFP process because we had to have that transparency to our members because that's where we're funded from. So it was great news that we ended up where we are with using Finos that you know, perfectly aligns with, uh, with, with our values as well, and which is why and it's just a great opportunity. Georgina, anything to add on your thoughts? Yeah, no, so just really uh, touching on the fact that the, the associations don't naturally work together actively very often, actually. So this is quite a fa truly, you know, groundbreaking project because we all look after our own individual, you know, businesses. But, you know, actually the ability through an RFP to A, do the process properly, but also B, come to a joint, completely agreed, well-governed decision is very, very important. Otherwise, you know, we feel like somebody's made a decision without the other party having full input, so. So I'm going to contradict. Yeah, you're going to contradict. Just a little bit. So, <laughs> I mean, especially on regulations where there's no yeah. point in, where, where we're very sort of similar, we're like something related in terms of the way our markets operate. And where we, especially on something, again, like regulations, it makes sense for us to align. So we have been aligning on certain regulations to make sure that our yeah. best practices fair, are aligned. Fair adjustment, Adrian. Right. And, <laughs> and, and, but it's give and take, though. I mean, sometimes, you know, you come up with better ideas and they get adopted into ours yeah. and vice versa. And yeah. we've had that actually with a very large body of trade associations on some of the regulations that are going through at the moment. There's like 10, 15 of us get together globally. Uh, and we agree you know, what the standard should be just because it makes sense to do it yeah. like that, not for yeah. any nefarious reasons. <laughs> no. And I think it's a big thank you, if I can do it on behalf of the financial industry, that you're collaborating together to bring this uh, into one place. So I think uh, that's, that's great. If you're interested in hearing more, I know we've touched on little bits here, but there's so much more going on today about the CDM. You've heard a little bit about it. I know there's a session that will look at the history of it. So if you're interested in what happened over the last six years, there's a, there's a session happening on that. There's also going to be showcases of how it's being used in the industry. You've heard of, from a couple of us, but actually there are other people in the community that are doing it. So please go and find that session as well. Perhaps a little shameless plug from me. Uh, so my role within Finos is also as co-chair of the Financial Object SIG. Um, and over the last couple of years, we have been contributing to the CDM through that SIG, but we have great ambitions of what more we can do uh, now that sort of this launch is happening. And so if you're interested in anything we've just spoken about, please do come and find me or my co-chair Ian is somewhere around in the room at the back over there. Uh, please do come and find us. We would love to hear how you'd like to get involved or how you'd want to see this sort of move forward over the coming years. So please do come and get in touch. Perhaps to finish us off, because we've spoken about quite a few things, can you each give three words that you want people to take away from this session today and as they go and sort of enjoy the day? Georgina. Okay, so the first word, having been corrected by Adrian, is collaboration. But in all seriousness, <laughs> in all seriousness it's all about collaboration, us and the whole of the Finos community. Uh, foundational, and then embed and deploy. That's four, but they're the same. So embed and deploy. Excellent. Uh, Adrian. So I'm going to be cheeky and I'm going to, I'm going to try twice. Again, isn't he? So my first attempt is adopt our CDM. That's, that's an obvious one. That's to, obviously to financial firms and to regulators as well. And then uh, we're going to use some sort of standard sort of terms like standards, uh, future and efficiency. Great. And Alan, to finish us off. Um, I, I think I've touched upon it, mutualisation um, of effort, which also you know, ultimately means cost. Um, several words there, that's not quite one, but uh, <laughs> hopefully that suffices. Um, industry standardisation, I think, is a key part of the, uh, of the remit of, uh, of trade association and uh, machine executable interpretation. That was loads of words. Um, <laughs> I've cheated. <laughs> that's why I put them at the end. Um, excellent. Well, thank you so much to our esteemed panel. Thank you for being here. And hopefully you can all see um, and we'll get involved throughout the day. Thank Thanks, you. Fiona. Thank you.